Hey everybody, welcome to this video on getting the Betaflight Lewis scripts on your RadioMaster TX16S or actually any other open TX radio. This is actually the seventh video in my TX16S series. So if you came here just looking for the Lewis scripts uh, and you were unaware that you were venturing into a long series, check the description for a link to the entire playlist where you can basically get up and running with the T16S from absolute zero to where we are now, which is Betaflight Lewis scripts. And if you came for the Betaflight Lewis scripts because you're interested in being able to tune your PIDs on the fly up in the air, then you've come to the right place because you're actually going to get a bonus. You're going to get all of that. But some of the previous videos that we worked on were also another way to tune PIDs in flight. And I think that the advantage that that method has over the Betaflight Lewis scripts is that you never ever have to take your eyes off your quad. For example, if you wanted to adjust roll integral, you just flip the switch in a roll integral. Roll integral. It gives you a verbal cue as to what you're, and then you use this SC switch and basically do incremental changes like that. So if you wanted to go from say 70 to 65, you'd go one, two, three, four, five, and you'd be at 65. So basically you never had to look down. What we're going to do here by the end of this video is we are going to incorporate the uh, Betaflight Lewis scripts as advertised, but we're going to incorporate this three switch methodology in a hybrid approach with the Betaflight Lewis scripts so you get the best of both worlds. Now, let me stop jabbering and start working. We want to go ahead and shut him down. And we're going to squeeze T4 and T1 together and open it up in bootloader mode. And it's going to be an extremely bright screen. It basically freaks the camera out. Um, but essentially what I'm going to do is uh, I want to get this guy up and I want to get him connected. All right. So once you're connected to the computer, we're going to want to go to OpenTX. And anytime you flash firmware, you want to make sure that everything is backed up. So I'm going to go to File and Recent Files and pull my file up. Now. If your OpenTX has later information than your radio, then all you really need to do is just make sure that this file is saved. If your radio has more up-to-date information than your OpenTX, then you're going to want to basically read models from the radio and then save. Either way, make sure that you're backed up. All right, so this is what we're going to do. All right, so in order to get the Betaflight Lewis scripts on your radio, we're going to have to flash the firmware again, but we're going to have to tell it we want the Lewis scripts. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like an add-on menu item. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Lua, and I'm going to choose No Heli because I don't need any of those features, and uh, it just makes it easier to navigate through the menus. One less thing, and we're going to say OK. All right. So now what we have to do is we have to file download and check this out it's it's differentiating between this firmware and the firmware you already have on your radio because it actually says lua no heli right so i'm going to go ahead and download this firmware all right and i am going to put it right here and then select okay so now that we've done that we can go back to read write and we can write firmware to the radio and it's going to ask us which one. And we want to make sure that we're getting the Lua no heli. All right. Everything else here seems to be good. Right to TX. And there it is, flashing done. So now we have the no heli Lua on our radio. All right. So our next step is going to the GitHub and it's going to be github.com slash paid flight slash paid flight dash TX dash Lua dash scripts slash releases. All right. I'm just kidding. You don't have to know all that. I'm going to put a link in the description for you, but here we go. So here's beta flight TX Lua scripts 1.5 and that's the latest and greatest, which is what we're going to grab. And I'm going to go ahead and click and it's going to put it in the downloads folder. All right. So let me go ahead and grab it and click on it. All right, so once you unzip it, you're going to get this folder called OBJ and you're going to click on it and you're going to get some folders that make a little bit more sense to you. And essentially what we're going to want to do is this right here is the root directory uh, of our SD card, which is actually plugged in via USB. And we're going to want to grab all three of those 
and we're going to just go boom like that. Now I may have already done this, so let me just go ahead and do that. My radio looks like it already had all that stuff on it. So there's that. And then if we go back and we look at the directions, all right, so in the directions straight from the GitHub, it says that we will know we did it correctly if the BF Lua shows up in scripts tools. So let's pull this up. And let's go to scripts tools. And there's the BF file, so we know we did it correctly. Go ahead and close out of these folders. So I'm going to go ahead and get a model and plug it in and open up Betaflight. All right, now my next move is to connect a model. All right, so in order to get the beta flight Lua scripts to work properly, you need to be running telemetry from your receiver back to your radio. And here's my setup right here on ports. So here's what my configuration looks like. I've got smart port running on UART2, and this is my S bus running on UART3. Next thing you want to do is go to, go to your configuration page and come down and make sure that telemetry is on. All right, so our next move is going to be on the radio itself. All right, so I've got the model plugged in right now, and there's a battery on it. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to long press on system, and then you're going to come down in tools to beta flight setup. And the first time you press this, it's going to run a script, but I've already done that. So I'm going to end up on this screen. As soon as the script just runs, it takes like, like a second or two. Um, now, this, this beta flight Lua script is amazing, and it's got tons and tons and tons of information. We're going to primarily, we're going to be focused only on the PID1 screen, which is uh, our roll pitch yaw and our PIDs, but we can thumb through real quick. And as you can tell, this has an incredible amount of information, rates, and advanced stuff, and it just kind of keeps going and going and going. Amazing. We are going to be primarily focused on the PID1 screen, which is the screen right here. And these are not real PID values. Don't use these values. These are just arbitrary. I, I started them all at 50 just for the purposes of making videos uh, and being able to see the differentiation. Um, but here's my thing. Don't get me wrong. I think that the Betaflight Lewis scripts are absolutely amazing. But what I had a problem with was, say I'm up in the air right now and I need to change my pitch integral. All right. So I'm up in the air. I'm looking at my quad. Now I'm looking down at the radio. Um, I look back up at my quad just to make sure that I'm okay. I look back down at my radio. I'm on 50. I look back up at my quad. I click. I want to change it to say 55. I'm, I'm looking down. I click and now I'm looking up again. Okay. That may not seem like a lot, but eyes off the quad for that long. To me, at least it, it is kind of a big deal. All right, so for those of you who this is the first video of mine you've ever watched, you came here to learn how to install the Betaflight Lewis scripts, I'm going to ask you to stick around for a couple of seconds. And for the rest of you, you guys know that this video series has been largely centered around tuning your PIDs in flight without having to take your eyes off the quad. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so I've reset all the values back to 50 so that it would be easy to track the changes. But by way of comparison, let's take a look at the three switch method for changing your PIDs in flight. Now, remember, this time we don't have to take our eyes off the quad because we've got voice cues. So say, for example, I want to change. Let's do um, what did we do earlier? Did we do pitch? We did pitch. We did pitch integral. All right. So let me see where my switches are. I'm already in the middle. Um, so I'm at pitch. There's pitch integral. And then I want to change it from 50 to 55. One, two, three, four, five. Done. I was able to do that. Never took my eyes off the quad. And you're thinking to yourself, hey, I didn't, I didn't see a change. Well, we have to refresh the screen. So we go here and we come back. And it's 55. Worked beautifully. Let's change things up and do roll derivative. So now I'm set for roll derivative and let's change it. Uh, let's change this one to 45. Boom. And refresh and it's at 45. So the fact of the matter is, is that the, the change is instantaneous. I mean, if I want, if I want pitch proportional, 
All right, I just wait for it to get there. I'm pitch proportional. I want to change that by six. One, two. It's done, okay? It's done. Uh, I will notice a change in my flight characteristics even, even right now. I can continue to make changes and change these numbers around. I'm not going to know exactly what they are until I refresh the screen, but I didn't have to look down, and that's my whole point. So let's go like this like that and you can see that the pitch pitch proportional is is actually in fact changed so once we're good we can save the page and now that has saved to our quad uh, of course uh, the other thing that we can do to save to our quad is land and take these guys sticks down sticks over and that would actually save the uh, stuff too all right so one more thing to demonstrate and note that i've changed all of the values back to 50 and we're going to go ahead and save the page right here so that you see that they're saved. Um, one of the things that I always forget to do when I take off is, is be on this page in the first place. So I actually have to navigate to this page. So if you figure I take off and I'm on my main page, uh, in order to navigate to that page, I'm up in the air. I've got to hit system and I got to look down while I scroll. I'm looking down, looking down, still looking down and boom, I get there. All right. Now, Assuming, of course, that I'm already up in the air and I forgot to go to that, that page uh, and I need to change um, pitch derivative, I guess, for example. So I want to go to pitch, pitch and then, pitch derivative. all right, so now I'm at pitch derivative. Remember, it was set to 50. Say I want to uh, increase it. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that change is done. That change is made. I didn't have to go to the beta flight pit screen to do that. All right. So let's go, let's go verify that. And there it is. Pitch derivative changed to 55. In the end, you can do it however you want to do it. Obviously you're going to, uh, but for me, it really wasn't until I combined these two to where I was really able to get out and and get good at pid tuning so obviously if, if you're watching a video on pid tuning you know the struggle of being in the air noting that you need to make a change landing plugging into beta flight making the change taking off flying again realize that you went too far land yeah you know, one change at a time one change fly one change fly one change fly one change fly um pid tuning that way gets old fast and it gets extremely frustrating fast and there's nothing worse than taking all that time to build a quad and then it just doesn't fly right so that's it that's my hybrid approach all right of using the three the three switch method and the beta flight lewis scripts together i think is the absolute best of both worlds um, because you can make the changes without having to look down and then when it's appropriate time to look down like after you land or whatever, you can come to this, you can come to the beta flight PID screen, see where your numbers are and, and adjust from there. If you're interested in checking out some of the other videos in the series, there are six that come before this one. And if you check the description below, uh, there is a link to the playlist. Uh, hopefully you found some value in this video. If you did, please like comment, subscribe. And if you really like the video, please feel free to share on social media as well. All right, I'm Steve. Hit that bell to get notifications on future videos because I've got ideas for at least a couple dozen more quad videos, and that's just in the immediate future. So I uh, appreciate you watching. Thanks for sticking with me to the end, and I'll see you in the next video.